The only thing new on my face is from Milk Makeup, and I'll explain why in a second. Hey, everybody. Today, we are taking a look at old products. These are things that I've had in my rotation for a very long time. Some of my favorites. And I'm going to talk a little bit about formula versus price and where we see ourselves now in about to be 2025. So the products that I have on my face that are new are the Milk Makeup. This is the, let's get the name right, Jen. <laughs> the Hydro Grip Primer. So I am trying this out. Milk sent this to me because I do have dry skin. I don't generally use primers, but I felt like you know, I should try them out. I have to say, this does seem to be working. Um, I don't dislike it. It's not irritating my skin. It's not, you know, settling the lines or making me feel dry. In fact, it seems to be hydrating. Um, again, I'm going to have to, you know, keep using it, but my skin does feel more hydrated and smoother. I gotta say, uh, if my skin will stay looking smoother longer and the makeup will stay on longer, I just don't know yet, but it does seem to be working so far. This is on sale at Sephora, so you know I wanted to get it up now and talk about it now, even though I haven't used it for more than a couple of months. But in the month that I've used it, good, pretty good results. Um, then I'm using the Milk Makeup Kush High Roll Mascara. Again, trying this for about a month. It's a really nice mascara. It's more of a lengthening mascara than it is a volumizing mascara. But you know, I think it's a good mascara. I certainly. I have nothing, I have nothing negative to say. Um, it's got one of those kind of prickly brushes, but I've gotten more used to the prickly brushes <laughs> lately. Um, so if you're looking for something that's gonna catch every lash and you know, get a, a good lengthening on your lashes, I think this one will be something that you like. You can take a look at my lashes to see what you think. Now, the milk products are more reasonably priced, but as we all know, the brands like uh, Tom Ford, By Terry, Armani, Chanel, Givenchy have all gone up astronomically, Chanel, in the last couple of years, especially since 2020. So what I wanted to do today is talk about a couple of products that have been my favorites for a long time and talk about the formula versus the price. So first, let's talk about the foundation. The foundation I'm wearing is the Tom Ford foundation. This is the, it's a nude ivory, the shade and illuminate foundation. And I think I got this like three years ago. So it's not particularly old, but you, know, you, can, you only can keep foundations for so long. This is probably, I mean, it's probably on its last legs. The thing about this foundation is when it came out, it was incredibly expensive for its time. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it. I'd have to go back to my video, but I remember it being over $100 and being like, wow, that's a lot of money for foundation. Now, you know, there's tons of foundations that are in that price range. It has an SPF 50 and it comes in a glass bottle and it's, it's actually, the packaging is really, really nice, really well done by Tom Ford. So I just think it's interesting to say the foundation is a really good foundation. It's great for people with dry skin or mature skin and I do like it. And the packaging is much more substantial and again, it's glass than the packaging of nowadays. Uh, we see a lot more plastic. We see a lot of, you know, less detail on the packaging and then the price has gone up quite a bit. That was the first really expensive, yeah, really, you know, overly expensive um, price point foundation that I used on the channel. I still like that foundation, but I use very little of it. I don't need a lot on my face, but I will say it does cover and offer more uh, of a full coverage, medium to full coverage than the tinted moisturizers that I use nowadays. So in regards to like the difference between price and formula, the packaging was better because it was all glass and really heavy. The formula, I actually think the formulas of foundations and tinted moisturizers have gotten better for dry skin. I can only speak to that, but, but definitely better. This one's a good one, but I do think there's better ones that have come out since then. Um, and the price point, it was already really high to begin with. So in that case, you know, I think actually, other than the packaging, I think I think foundations and tinted moisturizers are better now going into 2025 than they were back in 2020, 2020 2021. The lipstick. So I have on a Givenchy pencil. This is a lipstick pencil, lip liner in Mocha Renversant um, number 09. And the Givenchy pencils used to be my favorite lip liners. They don't exist anymore. 
But when I bought them way back in the day, um, they were not particularly expensive. Um, they were, you know, I forget exactly how much I paid for them. I tried to find a, an actual price, but I couldn't online because they don't exist anymore. Um, but they were in like the, you know, $20, like $25, $29, something like that. Um, they weren't particularly expensive when I first started buying them. These were made in the Czech Republic, which is interesting because <laughs> that region of the world has um, uh, has a lot of tumult. Uh, so it's interesting that they were they were made there. Uh, they are very creamy. They work extremely well, and they last a really long time. The new Tom Ford liners are better than these. They're better than the Chanel's, and they're better than practically any other liner I've ever used. So again, I think the formulas and the lip liners have gotten better, but you know, the lip liners are, I forget exactly, I'll put down below exactly how much they are, but they're incredibly expensive. I think it's maybe $50. So you're, you know, the price points have almost doubled, but I do see an improvement in formulas, not across the board, mind you, but there are new, te new technologies that I feel like have been advancing the lipsticks of old, uh, the lip liners of old. This is a lipstick that's no longer made. This is the Deorific lipstick. Now, I have Deorific lipsticks that are quite old, which still self smell absolutely fine, by the way. I keep them, again, away from sun, away from air, all those things, but eventually they are going to go bad. Um, this one is 070. You might remember this one because it was 2020? Yeah, 2020. This is the Golden Knights collection. And this was a very light shade. It doesn't really show up on most people, um, but it does show up on me as long as I have a deeper lip liner, which is what I did today. And the Deorific formula was one of my favorites of all time. I really loved these lipsticks. I have many of them. Um, this is shade 076. And you know, they have a great formula. They were very opaque, really easy to use. They have a beautiful scent, which some people don't like, but it was a stunning scent that I that I did like. And on top of all that, they were $40 four years ago. It's 2020. It was $40 four years ago. You know, it's interesting to me. That's their high-end lipstick, the Diorifics, because of the packaging. I mean, look at the packaging on this. Just look at how detailed that is. And also it's heavy, like it's a heavy piece. So if we look at Dior right now and we look at their lipsticks, now of course they've gotten rid of the Diorifics, but they have what I would say is probably their top of the line, which is their Rouge Dior lipsticks. They are $54. So they've gone up $14 in four years for the gold packaging of the limited edition ones that just came out. Their regular Rouge Dior are $49, so $9 in four years. $49 might not seem like a lot in four years when you look at the $9, but the thing is in four years, it went up $9 on a base of 40. So you're basically talking about like a 20% increase in four years. A 20% increase in four years is quite a bit. Think about your own salary. Did your salary go up 20% in four years? Maybe. And if so, fantastic. Congratulations. But most of us, you know, have not made 20% more in four years. So the lipstick went up that much. And honestly, the packaging on the regular Rouge Dior aren't nearly as extravagant and luxurious as these. Just saying. Next is a product that uh, has been discontinued, but uh, there's a couple of these. Has been discontinued, but you can find them. This is the Neo Nude uh, Armani Melting Color Balms. I have this one in shade 30. I tried to use a shade that is available. Um, I think it's at Beautylish. I'll make sure the links are down below. There's like a very few left. These were discontinued when they came out with the new uh, Armani blushes. And these were my favorite blushes of all time. I absolutely love these. And I have them in practically every color. And one, two, three, four, five, six. I have eight colors. I don't think I have all the colors, but I have a lot of the colors. And honestly, the only thing that I can say about these is when I bought them, I think they were 
in the 30s, like 30, I think they were like $35 when I first started to buy them. Um, and then they went up to like 39 before they were discontinued. And then now they are on sale in certain places where they still have a few left. So you can get these for like, you know, in the 20s, um, because again, they're just selling off whatever stock they have. These are really good cream blushes that are basically what the new Chanel cream blushes are. So the cream blushes from Chanel are, I'd say, as good as these, but the thing is, they are twice the price. So Armani had these, and honestly, nobody used them, and I think it was because they just weren't publicized, they weren't marketed well, and Neo Nude, the Neo Nude line just didn't particularly sell well, and so they got rid of them. But they are phenomenal blushes, and if you can still find them in a couple of places, I would definitely pick them up, because they're like a cream to powder that's absolutely exceptional. So the, you know, what I would say is the new cream to, uh, new cream to powder blushes, yes, they have finally come up with a formula that matches these, but they already had them. They're more expensive. And honestly, the packaging is, you know, from Chanel is Chanel packaging, but I actually thought that these were a little bit more creative um, and interesting because you could always tell the color of the blush from the top of the container, but maybe that's just me, but I always like that. Um, the bronzer I'm wearing is the By Terry. This is the Desert Bear, B-A-R-E, powder. So this is a compact. They used to, By Terry used to have these silver hockey puck <laughs> compacts that are incredibly heavy. Um, and this was called the Densilis line. And this is actually a powder. It's meant to be a pressed powder for, for your skin. I use it as bronzer because I am so incredibly pale. The formula in these was one of the best formulas of any powder I've ever used. And I have several of these compacts, um, bronzers, highlighters, blushes uh, in my top drawer. And that's where I keep them because they are really silky smooth and perfect. I used to love the By Terry Densilis products. And I was really sad when they got rid of them. Um, you know, I, I feel like when they, those went away, I felt very similar to how I felt when the Armani Neo Nudes went away. By Terry used to have a Densilis foundation as well. I think they still have that one, um, but the shades were always a little bit difficult for me to for me to figure out what my shade was. Uh, and that's the thing about By Terry. By Terry has really good products, but they're not. You know, where I used to buy them was at Barney's, and then when Barney's went out, it was kind of you know difficult to find them, frankly, and they just weren't getting the same exposure that other brands did. I don't know what happened there, like in regards to management or marketing, but they did not do a particularly um, good job, unfortunately. So it looks like you can still get them at some places. Not a lot of shades are available, obviously, because they're just selling through back stock, but there are some, uh, I'll link where I can find them. And when I used to buy these, they were in the 30, 40 something dollar range. And again, you can buy beautiful, creamy, translucent powders nowadays, but the price has jumped astronomically, especially in powders. Like, you know, there's some really good powders by Clé de Poe and Chantecaille and Westman Atelier, but we're talking in, you know, hundred dollar range. Guerlain just came out with their loose powder, which is a beautiful um, loose powder, but it's a hundred dollars. So the powder products, um, powders, loose powders, pressed powders, eyeshadows, those products, I think blushes have really gone up faster uh, and even more intensely than some like the lip products have. And I don't know if that's because that whole lipstick index that I was talking about. And so they want to sell more lipstick. So they keep that price a little bit lower or, you know, or maybe it's the ingredients that are in powders and how to, you know, improve the formulas. I'm not sure, but I will say these old by, by Terry's were some of my, some of my favorites. The highlighter I have on is a, is a hotly contested issue right now. Uh, this is the Prisma Libre highlighter in 10, shade 10, Organza or uh, Givenchy. And this was the limited edition one. This is like a little mini one. And, you know, shade 10 still exists. Um, you can probably even get, you can probably even get shade 10 um, in an old formula somewhere uh, online. But what you notice about the older Givenchy highlighters 
is the beauty of the highlight. Like there's something wet about their highlighters that come in this packaging, the Prisma Libre. And I was never really a fan. If you go back and watch some of my early, early videos, which are terrible by the way, but that's fine. Um, I talk about how I don't really like having to dump the thing into the cap and then, cause I don't, I don't like that. Um, but I bought a lot of these anyway, the Prisma Libre, because the formula was unmatched and there really wasn't anything else like it on the market. Um, and I, I think that's still true. There isn't anything that has replaced what I think um, Givenchy used to have. Now, we were specifically talking about the powder, or the loose powder, not the highlighters, but they still have changed formulas across the board. So I haven't bought any of their new highlighters. I'll see when the new one comes out, if I want to buy it and see what I think of it. But I have to say, uh, going through all my old Prisma Libre highlighters and powders, I was like, yeah, these were pretty exceptional. So yes, there are new formulas that are cleaner, but they're not nearly as, in my opinion, they're not nearly as good. They're quite a bit more expensive and the packaging is basically the same. So, you know, the price increase and the need for changing the formula, the, the changing of formula, I think, really has to do with the, the clean industry issue. And then the price, as I've discussed in many videos, there's multiple reasons why a company might raise prices. If we're going with the, the best scenario, it's because the, the products and the shipping and the uh, supply chain uh, has, has caused those increases. If we're going with the worst, it's just great. Who knows? We can decide on that later. On the eyes. So as I said, I have got the Milk Mascara um, on my eyelashes. The eyeliner is a Tom Ford eyeliner. This is an old one. And this is a metallic moss. And I'll, I'll put this one on my, my hand as well because you'll see it on my, me putting it on my eye, but it's kind of hard to tell the shade when I'm putting it on. It is the most beautiful metallic mossy green that has ever been created. And Tom Ford had the most beautiful eyeliners. Now he's just come out with new eyeliners in black, brown, and white, and they are exceptional. And in fact, I think the formula is better than these old ones. Not by much, but I do think they're better. But the shades are incredi incredibly limited. So if Tom Ford comes out with a green and a blue and a purple and all of those, that's fantastic. And I will buy each and every one of them. But what I wanna say is Tom Ford had these amazing eyeliners for years. And then they were just gone and they were not expensive. They were like $30. I mean, I guess for the time they were expensive, but they've gone up quite a bit since then. And they had so many different shades to choose from. And now there are three shades and they're, you know, I'll put again, the price down below $50, $60, whatever they are. So I'm glad that Tom Ford improved the formula. That's great. I mean, that's a really good thing, but the pencils are basically the same, you know, it's a pencil. <laughs> Uh, so the packaging is not really any different. Um, it's much more expensive and the lack of color choices is just confusing to me because, you know, Hermes has, I don't even know uh, the total with lip pencils and line, uh, eyeliners, like 22 pencils, um, which are not very good across the board. There are some shades that are actually really good. I ended up getting those mostly. Um, but you know, most of them, you can't really tell. Some are good and some aren't. So I'm like, how could they do 22 shades of kind of okay? And Tom Ford did three shades that are perfect, but couldn't you have created a couple more shades? So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that, that comes soon because otherwise that's going to be disappointing. And last but not least, the eyeshadow that's on my face. This is Tom Ford's She-Wolf. Uh, this is 10 years old. 10 year old shadow um, and one of the prettiest that I have ever used from Tom Ford. Um, the shades are deceiving. In the pan, they look like grays, which they are, but they have a gray, depending on which shade, some are brownish black, some have a greenish shade, some have a silvery blue. And when you put them on the eye, they are just, I mean, perfect and stunning. And just, they go on just smoothly, perfectly no issues. You know, I remember using this on, on folks and being like, ah, worked on everybody every time. Now the three shades like this from Tom Ford, he does not do uh, or has not done in quite some time. So that, that idea of having a trio 
I haven't seen. So that's just gone. Uh, that's the first part. Um, the second part is it was $60 10 years ago. And basically a new one is $100, $90, depending on the limited edition nature. So it went from $60 to $90 in 10 years. Now, 10 years is a long time. I'm not saying it's not, but 60 to 90, I mean, that's kind of quite a big, quite a big swing there. Um, and, you know, I, yes, you get another shade. You get a four shades instead of three shades, but I'm going to bet the amount of shadow that you're getting is, is going to be similar. The formula in this is better, much better than the new Tom Ford formulas across the board. The Tom Ford crime formula is a little bit of an exception, but, um, and metal loss. There's like, you know, that's the problem. There's some Tom Ford that are great, uh, in their shadows and there's some that are just like, eh. uh, but the, the Tom Ford 10 years ago, all of it was really, really good. And this trio and they had other trios that I own were all fantastic and excellent for $60. Now, Again, $60 wasn't nothing 10 years ago, but the looking at the price point, 60 to 90, that's just such a jump. I mean, it's just, when you think about it, it's ha like you're literally half of 60 is 30. So add 30 on to get 90. Like that's just a huge leap. You're like, you're like, wow, that's, that's a lot. And so I think today when we're looking at these brands and there's a reason I didn't include Chanel in this particular makeup look. I am doing a, a Chanel video coming up soon where I'm comparing some old Chanel and new Chanel holiday. And, um, there's some interesting insights into, to that. But if you're feeling a little let down by your products that you're looking at now in your luxury products and, and you're feeling a little used by the price point, you're not the only one and you're not imagining it. There is a little bit of, there is a, sense, I think for many of us that we are paying more for less. And I am here to tell you, and I'm going to be doing more of these videos as the months go on, that that's probably true. We are getting less for more for the most part, um, in the luxury brands, Chanel, Tom Ford, um, you know, Dior. It's not to say that there aren't improvements. Like I mentioned, I think the formulas for foundations and tinted moisturizers are better now. I think the lip liners, um, have come a long way. I think eyeshadows have actually come a long way. I think there's been improvements in all of these products, skincare, especially, but we are paying so much more for it. And the packaging for a lot of this is not keeping up with the price point that we feel like we're kind of let down because, you know, 10 years ago we were getting something that worked beautifully. The packaging was really nice and substantial. And even four years ago, uh, looked a little over the top and opulent and luxurious. And it was almost as good, if not sometimes better than the new formula. Um, and it, it leads to this sense of disappointment in a lot of the things that we're buying now. So dig out your old, products, dig out your old makeup, make sure that you are using them before they go bad because it does have an expiration date. All of it does. And incorporate some new things like I did today with the milk products, the hydro primer. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't think this existed 10 years ago or something like, like this, uh, for my type of skin because I had dry skin. I've always had dry skin. And I remember trying primers back in the day and none of them worked, none of them. And I tried a lot. I had the worst time. So I ended up just using uh, moisturizers. And that's when I started using the watery oil. I think it was right around then from Guerlain because a primer, a regular primer did not work for me because they didn't make primers generally to hydrate your skin. It just wasn't, you know, and if they were, they weren't really particularly good. <laughs> mascaras, honestly, guys, the mascaras weren't as good either. The formulas didn't have as many tubing mascaras. There, there has, there has been, um, a lot of great, advancement. It's just, we're not necessarily seeing, um, the other aspects go along with those things. And I think that's where we feel the disappointment. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear if you have any of these products. I'm sure many of you do out there. Um, and which ones are your favorites? I'm going to be doing more videos with, um, older makeup and, you know, combining it with new makeup. So let me know if there are old products that you want me to hunt through my stuff and see if I have, because I probably do, or at least there's a good likelihood that I do. Thank
Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon.